Welcome back to This Old Mannequin. I'm your host, David Shoblock, and today we're going to talk about something a lot of us use, and that's IV arms. Um, not here to talk about like which one to buy or anything like that. That's not this episode. This episode is going to be about what to do when things go wrong, or you need to restring one, or something like that. I've got a life form or a NASCO IV arm, and it's one that a lot of us use. It's pretty current on that. And so this one has something wrong. I've got a few different arms, and this is the one that my faculty kept coming back and saying, hey, I can't get flow, we can't get flash. And I've gone through all of the diagnostic things that I can do without ripping the skin off. Now it's time to get in there. So you can have air bubbles in the line and just one air bubble in the wrong kink and bend and area of it that will actually stop you from getting any flow. You really have to be able to flush and do a lot of things like that on there, but we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how to kind of tear it down, how to restring it, some of the things I do and why I do them. So right now we've got your standard NASCO IV arm. It's got the bag still attached to it, and it's ready like that. So first thing I'm going to do is probably discontinue the bags. Just kind of pull them off, put those to the side, and then we're going to kind of look over the arm, see what condition it's in first. I actually have with me a brand new set of skins, tubes, and all that stuff if we need it. But I've also got other stuff if we don't think we need that. We're gonna first, we're gonna look here, and you know, it's got some, it's got some areas where it's been cannulated down here, things like that. It's, it's been stuck up quite a few times. If we look at the back of the hand there, it's got a few, but if I clean it real well, I would probably keep this in the service. But we'll talk about how we wanna do all of that. The first thing we wanna do is take the skins off so that we can look under it and see. A lot of times doing an IV arm, I recommend having two people, but sometimes on these loan shops, we just have us. I've done it, haven't done it in a while, but I've done it by myself, not on this model in a long time. I've done a lot of layered all IV arms for like 3Gs, old Simman classics, things like that, but I haven't done one on this one in a long time. Usually there's a shoelace kind of tie up that kind of bunches this up. I took that off at the shop months ago, and it's back at the shop. So this is in my shop, so we can kind of see how this is going. So what I want to do is just first kind of bend it over itself. I can inject water now, and I like to do that. I've got water here on standby. I've also got soap, and lubrication is the key for this. To be able to, it's the difference between doing it by yourself and fighting it the entire way. The, Soaps I recommend are cheap, not name brands. I don't really care. This is Palm Olive, a good brand. The key is I use antibacterial. And the reason is when the soap dries out after we're done, and because it'll be wet and soppy and we're going to let it drain, but the soap's going to be left in there and it's going to dry out. And it's going to be antibacterial and it's got that chemical agent in there that's gonna keep things from growing as much. Because a lot of times you peel back these arms and they're gross. All kinds of black and nasty in the plastics and all that. This is gonna help with that. It's not gonna permanently do it. It's not gonna, you know, it's not foolproof, but it works pretty darn well. First thing I'm gonna do is just kind of peel this arm back and see what we've got going on inside of it. Okay, we've got some different parts, some different pieces, things like that that it wants, and I'm gonna set that off to the side. So we've got the plastic kind of PVC-ish, I don't exactly know, but good tubing here. And as we go in, they've got this manifold here that those tubes go into, and then they have 
the latex surgical rubber tubing with a coating on it. If you look, most IV arms, the tubing when you get into it is going to be latex tubing. So if you have an allergy, you have to be careful and you have to protect yourself. These actually have coating on them to protect you, but again, if you peel back that coating, if you touch this, this is still latex. Well, why latex? It's the 2023 now, and we should be using silicone and non-latex, and I'm a huge proponent of that. I don't like using latex where we can help it. The where we can help it's the key. I've done silicone tubing on IV arms, and it just doesn't heal back, and I know it's not really healing, it's not a human, it's not an animal, but it does not shrink back. When you stab silicone, that hole's there forever, and it does not shrink down, whereas surgical latex or latex tubing will kind of stretch out of the way a little bit and then bind down. You're gonna get a lot more sticks. If you use silicone tubing, you're just gonna have to replace the tubes more often. Everything that the students touch should be latex free, but you as the ops person that's swapping these out, you gotta know there's latex in these tubes. As you can see, there's definite things that have been growing in here, and there's a lot of different ways and pathways and that these tubes go into. Take pictures. If you have an IV arm that's this complicated, my layered all ones are pretty much just all, you know, a, a standard pathway. This one is very complicated. It's got a lot of different pathways, a lot of places that you can cannulate, but I recommend just take some good pictures so you know how it goes. So we've got the arm peeled back to this point here, and now we're kind of to the point where it's kind of hard. It's kind of difficult. Well, that's when we've got to get some lubrication in here. So what I'm going to do is peel it back. I'm going to actually put some soap and some water on here, and then we should be able to get it farther down. So this was just my initial sneak and peek. And see, even pulling it against each other is kind of a pain. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get my pitcher, like this. I like finding the biggest syringes I possibly can. It works really, really well. This one is a 300 cc syringe. I've never seen one of these in the wild. I've only seen them on Amazon. So I ordered a pack of these off Amazon a while ago and I hoard them to myself. And then we've got our soaps. So what we're gonna do is just get some of the soap on my hand. And yeah, this gets a little messy, but it's soap, it's clean. So we're just going to coat like this and we're gonna coat going up. And have paper towels, towels, things like that, because obviously now my hands are slippery. So as I grab back onto these, it's going to be slippery and you're going to have a big old fight. I'm going to step off and get some paper towels to dry my hands. Okay. So now as I peel this back, you should notice it's a little easier. Look at that. It goes right on there. We're gonna do the same thing now on this skin so that it peels off. Get a nice cup in my hand, coat both sides of the hand, and then just get it all on there. The wrist is always the difficult part. Be ready for that. Dry your hands again, because you want to keep your hands that's pulling on the edge of this as dry as possible. And if you look, and you're lucky, everything should peel off. But again, that wrist is the hardest, so it takes a little bit of effort. With a little luck, peels right off. So I know a lot of people are saying, well, why not just cut it off? That's an option. You really totally can cut these off. I'm just frugal. I like to use my things as test skins. I like to use them over and over again. I might need to fill this with some silicone or foam and do things with it. I just am a pack rat, so I tend to keep things. 
don't leave it folded over like this. I know you're, you're got it done, you're happy, you're doing your little dance. If you keep it on here like that, it's gonna cut, it's gonna break, and you're out of luck. Make sure you fold it back on itself and put it back the way it's supposed to be. And I'll do that here in a little bit. This is the point where I'm telling you take pictures because this is a highway system that I don't know if I can come back to right away really quickly. The other thing I will say is this is a great arm. I, it's a staple arm. We buy a lot of them. I've used them throughout the year and I love them. And the amount of veins is awesome. But I know also if you looked at that skin and we fold it back on itself again and look at it, look at where your, your program is hitting a lot. I know I worked for emergency medicine residency for years and it was all forearms and AC all day long. Now I'm working for a nursing program and they do a lot more hands. Notice, you know, where your people are sticking them and where you have to replace those tubes. And that's key. As we said, it's a lot of ACs, a lot of uh, back of the hand, stuff like that. At this point, what I tend to do is I tend to try to look and see where there could be a clot. So what I want to do is look at all the tubes and see if something's kinked. So if I open it up and you'd have like a, a bend in here or something like that, that's where your problem is. And you can actually do flow tests and you can check and try to get this to work. But this had enough sticks in it that I think I'm done with these tubes. So I think I'm just going to let it go. And I'm going to be probably using some of this video that we're shooting to remember how to put this tubing. We'll test me later. So that one there just went around and back. That one there went like that. And just be careful because some of these parts are real thin and you could break it forever. Notice this one didn't have any sorts of glue holding it. They didn't super glue the veins. They didn't do any of that kind of thing. And, and that's key. So some IV arms will have your veins glued in and some people will glue them back in when they're done. I cannot wave you off of that enough because that's causing you more work later because when you're gonna change the veins, then you got to clean out all those glue channel out of the channels and all that stuff. So we got another trick we're going to get to. Here is the tubing right there, and here's how it looks. And so I've got basically where that all connects to, and I've got a couple of zip ties. Here's where we're going to open the box for the new one and see how they've got to set up on the new ones. Never even open the packaging, just kind of looking at what we've got here. So I'm guessing that's kind of some extra tubing and they were nice enough to coat the surgical latex tubing again for us. That helps out a lot. Instructions, read the frickin' manual. Yes, I do, most times. Mmm. Huh. Well, this one didn't come with any more tubing. I thought it did. I told you I didn't open the packaging before this. That's all I've got. That's, that's not a whole lot. So we'll actually just kind of test it and see how many I think we'll get. How many vessels that'll do me? Yeah, that's not a lot. I guess the key is know how to get more tubing. I ordered this off Amazon and 
whenever this subject comes up, people ask me like, well, there's, there's ID and OD, which is inner diameter and outer diameter of the tubing, and how thick do I want it, and what tubing do I do, and all this stuff. And really it comes down to, for me, is availability. What worked before, a lot of times I'll take a um, digital gauge and I'll measure my in, inner diameter, my outer diameter, and see. Or sometimes I just give it a wag, just a guess, and see what works for me. This is a whole spool of surgical tubing. Notice it's wrapped in plastic. You always want to wrap these in plastic, Ziplocs, whatever, because the longer it's exposed to outside air, it's going to dry rot and be trash. So I've had tubes of these where we're like, oh, we're going to put it in a bag sometimes. It gets jammed in a drawer, and then we pull it out a year later, and it's trash. Make sure you're putting these back in a bag of some sort. For this one, what I got was eighth inch, one sixteen, one quarter. Okay, what that means is the outer diameter of the tubing is one quarter, which is about what this is, I believe. I'd have to actually measure it. It's one sixteenth wall, I believe. Not seeing ID OD eighth inch, so it's pro actually it's probably eighth inch wall. I'd have to measure it because I bought it a while ago and it's been sitting on the floor of my shop for so long I forget. But I know we would take the Sim Baby version one. Great, great mannequin. It's a tank, but its peripheral IV tubing was just so small that my residents would be just hung up on trying to do an IV. And we went with a bigger tube with a thinner wall and it was easier to get because we didn't want to test them on getting an IV. It was all the rest of it. So really you have to think about what kind of a groups of uh, students, what dynamics you're doing or what types of students, whether it's be physicians, nursing, EMS, and then how they're learning and how big of a learning objective is it. Because there will be some physician, pediatric physician programs that will make it harder because they really want to test and make it harder on the residents. This is not coated either. So all of the nice coating that this had, this doesn't have. What we're going to do is we're just going to go on this thing and we're going to disconnect them one by one on the manifold. Hopefully it matches up and it'll be on there. If not, we'll zip tie them later. And then we're going to replace these one at a time. A lot of times what I will do is instead of taking all the tubing off at once, like I did to show you, I'll take them off one at a time and change those pathways. Sometimes I don't replace all the pathways because again, my students need forearms, hands and ACs, so I just want to make those pathways work. All right, so what we're going to do here is start investigating how to make this all work. First thing I'm going to do is get this tubing that I have here that's not enough of it out of the way. This first one here, it looks like I've got uh, Way the lights. First one it looks like I need to do is this guy right here comes in here out there. I'm going to take off one edge and I'm going to open up my tubing here. Don't lose that. And then I'm going to measure off what my tube size is. I'll give myself just a little extra, and the reason is I'll put it in the pathways and then cut it off, and if I have extra, I can cut it off. If I don't, I can't. Scissors I've got on my Leatherman. And try to cut it as straight across as possible. Mayhaps not the best scissors for this. 
but it worked. So I've got my first tube done, or actually measured. I'm going to stick it on the manifold here. And a lot of times I'll use just a little bit of lubricant. The soap works great because it'll dehydrate out and it won't be a problem. But you want to get that on there as much as possible. Because you don't want it falling out later when it's in the arm, somebody pulls it. I'm going to connect it. That's the first one done. Now I'm going to replace all of these and come back to you when I've got them all done because you don't need to see me doing this a hundred times. Okay, so we got all those tubes in. We are going to set that back in the way it's supposed to be, which appears to be like that. Manifold like that. And then we're going to put the tubes back in. So this is going to be trial and error because I'm not stopping the video and going to investigate and right away. We're just going to kind of work with it and see what I can do here see what tubes I can get to go where. I'm going to start with the lower tubes because those are in my way. This extra tubing here is a good thing. I'm going to leave that long. Now, when you're getting ready to put the skin in, you don't want anything extra. You want to cut those down. But this is just for placement and making sure I'm good. I placed that tubing in there, and you're probably thinking, OK, well, if I didn't glue it in or anything like that, how am I going to keep it from just popping right out? And I'll tell you, the key is paper tape. And I know there's a lot of different paper tapes out there. There's cloth tape, there's the transpore and things like that. Um, I have found that paper is the best. Transpore, if you use that stuff, the plastic coated tapes, a lot of times when you go back in there, it's just a gooey mess. The cloth tape is a good second, but this stuff, the way we're doing this, it kind of breaks down and very little bit of it's left. And so it it kind of does its own job. It holds when you need it, and then it doesn't get in the way. So like a cloth tape, if you use that, it's just something more to cannulate through. It's not a big deal. The needles go right through it. But again, it's just a little less. I've got a lot more tubes to hold here, so we're going to try to see if I can't do it without taping it in yet.
some of these don't follow through and things like that and they don't hold in, well, that's where the tape comes into play. So this is a silicone core, so the tape's not gonna actually stick to it. So you gotta band it around, get it on itself. What we wanna do is make sure these are sitting in the channels. We don't want them sticking out. Because if they stick out like that, what's gonna happen is when you put the skin on, it's going to bunch up. And that will cause you all kinds of problems. So anywhere where these are bunching up or bundling up, you wanna make sure that you are getting it squared away back feed them so that they sit right in their channels. How many of these you use is up to you. You just want to make sure all your tubes are laying down nicely. And I might not have routed everything 100% perfect, but I think I did okay. Again, what you should do is take pictures so you have reference, so you do this right. So now we've got everything laying down in here nicely, and I kick these tubes out of the way. Inspect again, make sure every, ah, see we had one sneak out right over there. And so we want to come back and we want to tape that guy. Looks pretty good. Looks like everything's kind of tucked under. That one there is a little bit problematic, but I think it's under there enough. It should be fine. Now what we got to do is kind of lubricate everything up. So the first thing I do is start with the skin. We've got the old skin. I'm gonna retire it. I will be totally honest. I probably wouldn't have retired that one. It's pretty serviceable. But I've got this extra skin. That one has definitely been well used. Remember, bag it. I would twist this and put it in there, get it out. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with your new skin. You want to add soap, you want to add water. So I've got that pitcher of water, I've got the soap, so I'm just going to cup my hand. And what I want to do is reach way up in there and get as much of this stuff lubricated as I can. Go all the way down to the wrist. Remember the wrist and the fingertips are what will drive you mad. You want to kind of roll it around like this. Go in there. And I need more. I never really worry about how much to use because, again, in my use, it's always dehydrated out. And it's only benefited me later because if I want to do this again, all I have to do is inject water. How I really like to inject water all the way down is I use a trocar chest tube, which is a chest tube that's got a rod in the middle of it. And it you can just slide it nicely, you lubricate it with some soap, you slide it down there and you pull the rod out. And then I can attach my syringe and I can get water all the way down there. But not all of you out there have that, so I wanted to use just what I got around. You may not have a big syringe like this, but you should have a syringe. Whoop. 
So at this point, I'm just going to add some water down there. Now I could just pour it down there, but where's the fun in that? So I injected about 250 cc, and I want to get it all the way down there, kind of soap it all up. Make sure everything's coated. And then what I'll do is I'll just dump some of the extra out. So now I've got my got my skin prepped. Now, same thing with the arm, just soap it up. Just get some good soap in your hands and soap it on up. Now I'm going to stay away from the places that I've got to put the plugs back into. I'm mainly concerned with the wrist, the fingertips, and the forearms. So I've got a nice skating rink here, slippery, nasty, and again, I'm going to ask for some paper towels and we're going to try to clean some of this stuff up because you want to have a good working surface. You don't want to have a big mess here if you can help it. Got one of my littlest helpers off camera handing me things. Get the prize Leatherman out of the way. Get my tubing and all that stuff. And we're just gonna kinda lay this next to each other. And match it up, make sure you've got it oriented right, things like that. We're just gonna slip it in. So what I wanna do is, Get it some of the way on, make sure I'm still oriented. So I've got my thumb here, I've got my thumb in there. And so then we're gonna kinda slip it on a little more. And we just wanna do this in little pieces, little parts. And if you feel resistance, you feel like it's not sliding, add more water. This is why I did a syringe or I do a chest tube or something like that. Because I want everything to be slippery slidey. You can also heat these up a little bit, a little bit. I've never done it, I've seen it done by a few other people that are awesome, and uh, it works. So we're going to check where I am with that wrist. And there we go. So I'm getting my thumb in there. And what you wanna do is, once you Start getting over the wrist. You want to start guiding the fingertips in where they go. You might have to back it out a little bit. Like I think I'm going to have to right here. Or you might get lucky like I just did. Or you might think you got lucky, and you didn't, like I just did. Because my finger's all in there folded out, so I've got to slide it off a little bit. Usually the thumb's the last thing. I got fooled. Fingertips, home, 
thumb still needs to be adjusted. Still need to kind of slide this on just a little bit, like so. Then I need to peel this back down to put all the little inserts in. We're almost there. From now on, what we got to do is just kind of adjust things a little bit. Make sure that everything seats well. And probably got about another inch or two to get those fingertips in. But for the most part, that's how to do this. I hope this helps out. And what we're going to do now is finish fitting it, do a flow test, because sometimes you'll slip it on there and you'll get a tubing that will kick kink in there or it'll stop flow. Uh, make sure it's not an air bubble. Try to force those air bubbles out, tilt your arm up, down, things like that. Make sure it's, before you tear everything down, make sure you know what the problem is itself. From here on, we're gonna do a flow test. We're gonna make sure we stick with an AngieCath once I get back to the shop. And then once it all checks out, we're gonna put it back into service and it's gonna be good. So I hope this helped you out. You can actually, Make this job easier, prove it could be done with one person, and get out there and fix your IV arms. If it was just the tubing that was kinked and could replace just the tubing, put the old skins back on, I replaced the whole thing. My name is David Schablock. This is This Old Mannequin, and we hope we see you on the next one. Make sure that you follow us on the different social media platforms. Ask your questions. Make sure you interact with us. We want to hear from you. You liked it, you didn't like it, whatever. Don't just give a thumbs down though, by the way. You gotta tell us why you didn't like it. I can take criticism, it's awesome. No big deal. But look forward to seeing you on the next episode of This Old Mannequin. Thank you very much, good night. <laughs>